there's an awful lot of pressure on people, particularly people running private businesses who are continuing to work, even if they're doing safely, and they're out of work, they're trying to make sure they can keep their businesses running. Do you know what? You're not going to get grief from me because I salute you for trying to keep this country going. Uh, Sadiq Khan, the London Mayor, has put out yet another one of his virtue signalling messages this morning uh, to those of us who, who do live in London, the epicentre, of course, of the pandemic outbreak, insisting that the tube journeys are down 90% and the tube must not be used uh, as a way of getting around the capital city unless you are an essential key worker. That, by the way, is not the current law. The new emergency powers from the government last week do not prevent people from going to work if they need to work and they cannot do that work from home. I am really, for one, fed up to the back teeth with a bunch of middle class people who can take their laptops home. Well, lucky old you if you can do that and lucky old me that I can work from home and still get paid. Taking their, uh, their laptops home, working from home and then looking down on people who do jobs that are out of the home to feed their families, put food on the table and to pay their rents and their mortgages. I'm fed up with it. We must not become a nation that wags our finger at other people because they're doing what they need to do. Those people aren't putting anyone at risk if they're following the rules, the two metres apart, social distancing, but they are doing a job that needs to be done. And I'll tell you what, those middle class people who are angry at other people going to work, they're not angry when uh, they've got someone in their local waitrose who's serving them. They're not angry about the people delivering on a cardo, are they? And they're not angry uh, when uh, perhaps their local fresh butchers is still open. They seem to be very, very picky about who they want to be working and who they don't. I think it's a little bit of time that those people need to perhaps wake up and realise that most people don't have jobs like them. There ends my lesson for today. Oh, no, I, I lie. It doesn't end today. Just one other thing. Um, nurses have had to be told not to travel in uniform in this country because some of them have received abuse from members of the public. If you are one of those people, wait until I get out of lockdown because I'm going to have words with you and perhaps even more than words. Genuinely, what is wrong? What is wrong with people in this country abusing healthcare workers on their way to and from work? You need serious help if that is what you are doing. Clarification might be quite useful, mightn't it, in terms of what people are and what people aren't allowed to do. But what are your concerns about the, the police and indeed the authorities, including the London Mayor Sadiq Khan and his views on whether or not people are allowed to travel on the tube in London or not, uh, whether they are essential workers or not? What do you make of um, how authorities have reacted to the coronavirus pandemic? I think some of them are relishing these powers a bit too much. And I agree, some clarification would be useful. And there is still an element of confusion as to what we are allowed and not allowed to do. But I think some police forces are just out of control. I mean, you mentioned Derbyshire police filming people from the sky because they were walking in the Peak District, which is about as socially distanced as you can get. Um, we've had uh, Welsh police in Wales warning Stephen Kinnock about visiting his parents, even though he was sitting far away from them and even though he was delivering them essential supplies. Uh, you know, it, it, the, the, some police forces are out of control. And, and the thing that I think is really irritating people is that we've been told for such a long time that there aren't a, enough police to, to walk up and down the streets. We don't have enough police to be bobbies on the beat. They can't investigate all burglaries because they're far too busy investigating crimes on Twitter and so on. And now, all of a sudden, there are plenty of police out there to film people, to watch people, to, to make sure we're not visiting our parents when we shouldn't be. So I think people think that the police are doing a bad job so far and I think they need to get their act together. Well certainly some police, some Derbyshire police, had rather proudly tweeted this poster <laughs> the other day despite posts yesterday highlighting issues of people still visiting the Peak District despite government guidance, the message is still not getting through and they're pointing out their drone has been out at beauty spots across the country and this footage was captured at Kerber Edge last night of people outrageously out walking their dog. Again, I mean dozens of miles from anywhere uh, mm. and then they decided uh, to dump black dye in a blue lagoon to discourage people from arriving to take Instagram uh, selfies uh, because uh, they thought if they sh if they make the beauty spot look not as attractive uh, then they would uh, people wouldn't go I, I would have thought people might want to now go to see what it looks like with the black <laughs> dye in it um, it does seem to me uh, we had this advice that we were allowed to go out to exercise and then it's been clarified you know once a day uh, perhaps under an hour and then it was oh well you can't drive anywhere my mother had the uh, situation yesterday as a 77 year old who's had a heart problem so she needs to isolate as much as possible She's got a dog that needs a lot of exercise. She goes out for a walk. The walk near her home 
is full of people. Loads of mm-hmm. people out on a sunny Sunday yesterday. But she's been told she can't get in the car and drive somewhere more remote so she can walk more safely for herself and for others. It seems to me that, that, yeah, that, that people aren't being allowed to use their own common sense. That's the key problem here. You know, people are making enormous sacrifices in this period. People are adhering to the lockdown. People have stopped working. So many people have lost their jobs. Uh, as Boris pointed out, um, the use of the railways has gone down by about 90% in this country. People are staying at home. And we don't need to drive the screws in any further. We don't need to make it even harder for them to live through this period. I think if people need to drive to a place in which they do their exercise or walk their dog, that should be fine. If people go for their daily exercise, that should be fine. And when when people are out, they know that they stay away from others. They know they shouldn't talk to other people. They know they they should keep that two meter distance. So people are doing this. And the problem with the, the message that the police, some police forces are sending is, well, we don't trust you to do it well enough. And we're going to uh, spy on you and take photographs of you to shame you and show that you're not doing it properly. And that's communicating a message of distrust. What we really need in this country now is a sense of social solidarity, a sense of public trust. We're all in it together and not this constant, you know, grabbing of people's collars and saying you're not doing it correctly. That's the bit that worries me. Well, that's it. I mean, there is a bit of distrust. One police force was saying that uh, they're, they're seeing more and more reports from neighbours mm. snitching on their their, oh, yeah. their, their neighbours uh, who are going out for a second walk outrageously, apparently. Um, uh, also, uh, the dark, another police service, it was the Met Police, I think, yesterday uh, tweeting Stephen Kinnock. No, it wasn't the Met, it was a different police officer, but tweeting Stephen Kinnock, the Labour MP, because he tweeted out a picture of him visiting his father, uh, South Wales Police, sorry, uh, he visited his father, Neil Kinnock, on his 78th birthday. He said, look, we were just dropping by some supplies, uh, and so we stayed, we took some chairs, we sat you know, more than two metres away to just wish my dad a happy birthday, and he got a telling off on Twitter by the police. You know, the thing that's really disturbing me about this lockdown, um, you, you know, I'm handling it pretty well, and I'm sure most people are as well for the time being. But what's really disturbing me is the snitching. You know, if we become a nation of snitches through this process, that will be a complete disaster. And the fact that the, some police forces said they've had dozens and dozens of calls from people about their neighbour going out for a second jog or someone walking their dog more than they're allowed to, that's really worrying. You know, there was a, a comedy club in Liverpool um, streamed a, a, an old gig that it, ple- that it held in its comedy club a few months ago, streamed it online. Lots of people thought it was a live gig and they phoned the police and the police oh. went down to the comedy club. Loads and loads of police officers, complete waste of time. So, you know, all these grasses and squealers and snitches, that's a really depressing aspect of this. It really I do is. Think we, yeah, we need more trust. And if we come out of this process in a Stasi-like country where we're all spying on each other, then it really will have been a, a bad process to have gone but, through. We have also, to hold it together. Yeah, we also need to understand that there will be people who have handle things differently and and I think you know it's much easier for me as 51 year old a nice home food at home and loving family to, to be at home whereas you know perhaps if you are say um, a teenager and you're early 20 you're, you're in a home that's 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 not I'm not forget comfortable that's not safe a lot of people live in unsafe homes they live with you know with with with, with parents who who are abusive um, a lot of people actually will need to be out and about more just for their own safety I think perhaps we need to perhaps uh, have a little bit of understanding that that, that some people's lives aren't as uh, easy as our own and we need to perhaps be a little bit more understanding of of of, of their ability to cope with these things uh, one thing also i think uh, i don't know if you've seen some of the photographs uh, which have been doing the round some um counsellors about people who've been panic buying and are then are throwing away perfectly good food there's been a few photos online a big fuss about all these people who panic bought didn't really need the food now the evidence suggests actually that supermarkets although they had their shelves wiped down you know, wiped away with loo roll and bread and things like that that actually um, the, their sales haven't gone up that much and that a lot of people are simply buying the amount of food that they need to feed their family when they're all stuck at home for a week instead of eating out or kids eating at school um, and there's no evidence that this food is not being eaten, is it? No, uh, you know, <laughs> the panic buying thing has become its own panic. You know, this panic about the stupid public rushing out and buying everything and things they don't need. 
not true. People bought a bit more than normal because they're going into lockdown. And also, by the way, because the media keeps pushing this message of disaster and apocalypse. And lo and behold, some people get a bit worried and buy a bit more than usual. Uh, so I, I think that's been completely overrated, And that's another example of, of distrusting the common sense of the British public. But I completely agree with you about the need for some people to get out of the house for a safely socially distanced walk by themselves or with another member of their household because you know let's the thing that's really irritated me is when there are these you know pretty well off comfortable people in the media and other sectors of life who are tweeting photographs of people going for walks or exercising in a park these people might live in tiny flats yeah. with no gardens with lots and lots of people there, some of whom they don't like, they might be having a really tough time. And we have to cut them some slack. If people Absolutely. go out for a couple of hours of fresh air, then that's fine as long as they're socially distanced.